Could we talk about these feelings for a moment? And can you share some insight about over, because feelings are very powerful and, you know, you can ask 15 different people about feelings and some, some might not think they're extremely powerful until they've either hit a wall of insurmountable obstacle or something's happened to them where these feelings are overwhelming. Can you, can you share a little insight on feelings and, and how it could be possible that if our feelings is what is laying us down to the ground, we know we can do it, but the feelings inside of us are telling us something different. Well, you know, Dan, it's interesting because my background is as a family therapist. So okay. I, I kind of hear transformation. I've transformed that into working in the workplace and the idea there is what we learned in our original organization the family is what we bring into our present organization the workplace and so those feelings we learned as kids will kick in when obstacles and disappointment show up in the workplace so i want to kind of lock that into to look at so people have another way of looking at this now okay one of the things that, that happens when I would do my work with families is people would have gone to um, uh, a picnic for argument's sake, and it started to rain. And you would have one person saying, oh, that was wonderful. It, it was great because it cooled it off and we had a time to sit under the umbrella and talk. Somebody else is saying, oh, that was horrible. And it was an inconvenience. So what we have to get is that every single one of us, every one of us has memory traces. And we will see no matter what the situation is from a very different vantage point. So if I have my feelings about something and my daughters have their feelings about the same situation, it, they, they could be totally different. We could be kind of going like this. So the most important thing about that is to really listen and ask each other so that we can find a common ground to talk about this mysterious thing called feelings. Now, let me go back to what I just said about a picnic and talk about mm -hmm. where these early feelings begin and their memory traces called MEMS. They're, they begin very, very early in our lives. And here's for argument's sake, you're, you're going to this picnic and everybody's all excited and you're maybe two or three years old and it starts to rain and it's a bad rainstorm. And you see your parents or your mother or whoever you're closest with very upset and frustrated. And as a little kid, we do mimic. We pick up from our parents, oh, rain, picnic, bad, rain, picnic, bad. So fast forward 25 years and off to another picnic and it starts to rain. And all of a sudden you're feeling upset and angry. And then the sun comes out, but you're still holding that upset and anger that's this memory trace from the earlier memory. And again, what we have to do is move it around, shake it off, dance, sing, take a walk, do something, and then begin to say, hmm, can I go back and trace this to find it? Sometimes we can, sometimes we can't. But these feelings that we have as grown-ups are always connected to something further back. And may I give another uh -huh. example that's yeah, kind of yeah. just happened? We have a leadership program called Total Leadership Connections, and it's a very in-depth program. It's a four-session program every other month, four times. And we take people to do a really deep dive because we believe that leaders really need to know themselves. This is leadership from the inside out. So in uh, one of the sessions recently, there's a man who uh, was in the special forces in the army and had been in a lot of combat. And he was one of the people who had been chosen to go in and get the hostages out of very difficult situations. And you okay. think hostage and you think no choice. A hostage is somebody who may be 
tied up, literally blindfolded, but he has no, he or she has no choice. And this guy would go in and he would be so angry. And the anger was good because it drove him and he obviously is fine and, and was very successful at what mm -hmm. he's now out of the military. But in the session, he did one of these times of going back to see where this anger, this emotion of anger, the feeling came from. And he was in shock. He's kind of a big strapping guy, you know, very muscular. But he said, you know, I was the runt in school when I was in elementary and junior high school, and I was bullied a lot. And he did never realized it before, but somewhere he said, I will never let bullies do what they do to anybody. And there he went into the special forces. So he began to connect feelings with those earlier memories. And it sort of released something for him. He didn't feel the, the tension and anger that he had earlier, even when he would talk about this. Does this make sense to you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And I mean, it, there's been, we've spoken to many experts and, and uh, a lot of them have the exact same analogy when it comes to changing your feelings internally as motion creates emotion. Exactly. And, you know, and, and, it, and it is, I mean, you look at people that start at the gym to do physical exercise and then, you know, after a couple of weeks, they seem happier, they're more enlightened, they're, um, they're more relaxed even. And, um, you know, when they stop, you see that edginess start coming back to them. So it's an interesting, interesting that, and I love the way that you relate it back to, you know, back to your past, because never once did I think of that. And, and, as, as you're going through your story, um, for the gentleman in the, in the armed forces, um, you know, you, you, it's developed inside of him that I, I don't want anybody to bully anybody because I've been on that end of the stick and I don't like it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Let me, he was so blown away literally by this. And, you know, the vets, the veterans who are coming back now are having a hard time reintegrating. And a lot of them stay back with the memories of what happened. And some of the things are pretty awful. So we are going to start a program with him based on looking at how to to work with these veterans so they also can begin to see how these memory traces play out with how they handle the difficulties that come ahead. Oh, that's going to be an amazing program because that's something that's so needed because the mental strain and just, I mean... Uh, have you ever read um, Unbroken by Laura Hildebrand? No, I haven't. Okay. I have it's to get a story it. of, it, it's an amazing book. It's a story of Louis Zamperini. Um, and he was a, a bomber, a, a bomber. And he was the gentleman that would look down the scope and bomb. And he was actually an Olympic runner as well. And this is a story of. <laughs> I mean, this story will do two things. And a dear friend of mine, Brian Viral, told me about this story. He said, Dan, there's two things that are going to happen when you read this story. One is you will never complain about anything that happens to you ever again. Okay. And two, you will see the mental strength that one's capable of, um, you know, in prison camps and b almost being beaten to death many, many, many times over and overcoming all that and coming back to the world after the war was over and after they dropped the big one, um, coming back to his family who thought he was dead for, I believe it was close to three years, but believed he was dead. His bomber went down and him and two other of his colleagues from the plane were on a little life raft and they survived enemy gun, enemy fighter planes shooting at them, sharks that were attacking the raft. I mean, just you pick the book up and, your eyes are wide as saucers reading it and every probably five minutes you're going, Oh my gosh. Like where just the mental ability to carry him through. And then when he got back, he was completely re removed from some si from society because he'd been in a, in a con um, pretty much a concentration camp for three years. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that 
reintroduction into society is huge in the military to, to be done for military programs. That's going to be a phenomenal program. Well, we're, we're starting it for September and I'll let you know how it goes. But uh, it's yeah. interesting. It came from this one man who the minute he saw the connection with what he did, he was able because he maybe sometime he will have to do that again. But he's now out of the military and he was holding too much of the anger and he can let that go because it does Beautiful. exhaust us. Yes. Yes. And and. You know, I mean, not to sound, um, uh, you know, just with the military thing, but G.I. Joe always said that knowing is half the battle. And if you know where that ingrained anger and, you know, frustration is coming from, you have the ability to change it and you have the ability to stop it or at least understand it and move past through it, right? Absolutely. And sometimes mm -hmm. it doesn't come from something that happened to us specifically. Sometimes it okay. comes from something that may have happened to a parent or a grandparent. You know, it may have happened mm. in the past and been carried uh, through the generations and it's still there. So I think the more we begin to know ourselves and look deeply in ourselves, and this is a time of uh, self-awareness on our on our planet. I mean, more and more people are saying, I need to find out who I am in depth so I can become the best person I can be no matter what.